Women do as well or better than men on 50 criteria. Financial management, strategic planning, team building, communications, you know, it just goes on and on. There are two categories we don't do well as well. We don't toot our own horn well, okay? So I always say to women, if you can't toot your own horn, toot someone else's. So that's... <laughs> You know, it's, it really helps to promote other women in your talking. Did you know what Judy McGrath did? That's fantastic. You know, it just is infectious if you support other women. But the other one is this risk business. You know, we feel like we have to do everything perfectly. We have to cross our T's and dot our I's. And we don't want to take a risk unless we have all the information. Now, what's really ironic about that is that 80% of all business decisions get made based on intuition. And women have, are famous for our intuition. But I can never remember a woman in business saying, to anybody else, I have great intuition, you should listen to me. We have great intuition. If 80% of all decisions are made on intuition, we should go with ours and not be so fixated on getting every last bit of information because frankly, we live in a business world that's moving so quickly, we can't have all the information. And uh, you know, the number of times I have gone against my intuition, we always, made a mistake. The number of times I went with my intuition, we didn't make a mistake. How did you first recognize that you were a leader? I think I, I came from a family of women who stepped up. I think it was just expected of us. I didn't know if I was going to be leading something tiny or something big. And it really, the scale of it didn't matter to me. What mattered to me was that I made a difference. And I think that's one of the great things about women is that we care about making a difference. And if we can make a difference, that is a very strong foundation to build from. It's just what you're doing, why you're doing it, not so much how. What advice would you have for young women here as they're just beginning on that path? Figure out what you really care about. And you can um, talk to lots of people and learn from people on, you know, your peers, your teachers, your uh, older friends. But honestly, you have to go inside yourself. You have to do this kind of inventory. What are you good at? What do you love doing? What are you passionate about? I think it, it starts with empathy. When you're running a company, you have thousands and thousands, well, possibly thousands of people working for you, all of them with different needs and different criteria, and you have to motivate them. And if you are dense and can't figure out what is going to motivate the people, eventually it, un it unravels. Be a good leader, you have to be an optimist. Mm -hmm. I, I think you have to wake up thinking anything is possible. The skills of leadership are something you're born with or something that can be learned? Here's another fact. Um, women can be trained to do just about anything. They are not as trainable as women because they wake up actually thinking they're in pretty good shape. And we wake up thinking there's a radio station in our head that's giving a play-by-play -play of everything we're doing wrong. Does anybody have that station in their head? Yeah. Well, we're always playing, giving a play-by-play -play on everything. So we can be trained to do anything. Um, that said, it really is, uh, in my case, I think I had some genes about leadership that were just there, that were unsuppressible. What are you most proud of as you look back on such an incredible path? But also, how are you looking towards the future? I am so excited about the technology that's available today. And 
I want a front row seat at that party because I want to figure out how that's going to be good for women. We buy 85% of everything. We, we uh, are chief purchasing agents. We have so many different jobs. We think on multi-planes at all times. We have 12% more prefrontal cortex. I know we have a speaker who's going to tell us about our brains. But honestly, the world of technology needs to put women in a first place position. They should not be developing things for uh, men, which they are, because they're, I sit on the board of technology companies, and we are the ones who are going to be in control of you. So I want a front row seat at that. And I think the most, what I'm most proud of is that I still love learning. I am a sponge, and I, I don't want to stop. So thank, thank you so much. You.